Medium-sized companies have been described as the lifeblood of the UK economy. It's estimated they have the potential to inject between £20 billion and £50 billion pounds into the economy by 2020. Despite this, medium-sized companies often feel ignored by policymakers. With me to discuss this are John Cridland, Director General of the CBI, and Michael Kitson, Senior Lecturer in International Macroeconomics at Cambridge Judge Business School. Gentlemen, welcome. First of all, John, um, why are medium-sized companies so important to our economy? Britain's got to get out of this credit crunch by exporting, getting back the notion that we're a trading nation in the parts of the world, Latin America, parts of Africa, the different parts of Asia, where we're not actually very strong exporters at the moment. And the British companies who are not there are precisely the medium-sized businesses you're talking about. There's no equivalent of the German Mittelstand exporting for Britain in these more challenging markets. So we've transformed the growth strategies of businesses that frankly have had a good decade serving the home market, and by the home market I mean the EU market, but there's not going to be enough growth to sustain British living standards. Are these the right companies to do it? Sure they are, because when they grow, they grow spectacularly well. More than half of all the job growth in Britain in the last decade was precisely this sort of mid-sized business. But too often, as you alluded to, they're the forgotten army of the British economy. They're too big to get support from government as small firms, but they're too small to have the brand visibility and access to government that large companies get. OK. Uh, so, Michael, um, uh, the government do talk a lot about rebalancing the economy. As, um, do you agree, as, as John said here, that um, these, these medium-sized companies do need to be encouraged? I think we need to strengthen the overall economy. I'd, I'd be very concerned about picking one size of firm to get special privilege in terms of government policy. Uh, this is really a danger of picking winners. And, and we, we do know some firms grow very rapidly, but they're very difficult to predict who they are, and they are in a minority. Six percent of firms are actually doing much of the growth in terms of output employment, but it's very difficult to predict which, what those 6% are going to be. I would totally agree that there's been a particular focus on small firms and entrepreneurship and, 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 and not much focus on medium-sized firms, but it would be much better to strengthen the overall economy, the overall economic system, rather than just focus on one type and size of firm to get special privilege in terms of government policy. Um, you mentioned about um, Germany, and, uh, and uh, there's a lot of talk about the Mittelstand there as being this um, driver of the German economy. What is it then about, about Germany that, that they managed to seem to create these uh, good medium-sized businesses? Well, the German Mittelstand has built up over generations, and it's a unique ecosystem relevant to German society. But there are some characteristics of German mid-sized businesses that we should seek to emulate. Generally, they have an appetite for growth. They may retain the ultimate ownership of the business within a family, but they're prepared to bring in professional management. They're prepared to step up. They get excellent support from German banks. The industrial banks in Germany provide what I would call the patient capital that helps these companies grow for the long term, rather than the short term working credit which is about today's business. And, and those are the German companies which export. Those are the companies that Chancellor Merkel takes on the second Lufthansa jet after the BMWs and the Siemens on the first Lufthansa mm -hmm. jet in a way that the British Prime Minister simply doesn't do. So you, you mentioned uh, finance there and access to finance, of course, is, is a big topic of debate. If you think about a mid-sized business, most of the government support programmes don't reach up to them. The corporate bond market doesn't reach down to them. We have a strong private equity and venture capital market, but by no means as strong as in America. People can get startup funding, if you think of a university spin-out, but when they begin to reach scale, when they're looking for 50, 60, 80 millions of pounds from the London market, in my judgment, too many of these firms find that patient capital in London is lacking, and we have a higher proportion of trade sales when those companies that could become significant medium-sized businesses like the German Mittelstand find the only option, particularly in sectors like high technology, is to sell out in a trade sale to big Californian IT and technology companies. Well, Michael, is this an issue of finance or is this an issue of building leaders who can, who can 
take their companies much further, build them to be something much larger? I think both issues are relevant. I totally agree with the issue about the importance of patient capital. And this, this is a long-term problem for the British economy, going back at least 130 years. So solutions will not be easy. We need long-term patient capital to invest longer term. We also need patient managers. We need managers who are thinking about longer term investment. We need longer term investment, particularly in terms of innovation. We are not very good at innovating for the longer term. The real big challenge is this, this issue of, sort of culture on, and the, the drive for we want growth. I think in Britain we have too much short termism, not only in terms of the financial sector, but also in terms of management and also in terms of policy. Policy makers are concerned with returns in three years, four years when they're going to get elected again. We need to build structures that help our economy grow, not just in five years and ten years, but in 20 years and 50 years. Okay, how can we create a more longer term sort of cultural outlook? Well, this is where I think a particular government strategy for mid-sized business growth is important. But if you've only got a strategy for businesses with a turnover of less than 10 million, if every time we hear the Prime Minister talk about entrepreneurship, he's talking about start-up Britain, we will never get the coalition of the willing, the city, the universities, the innovators, to rally round with government and focus on businesses with a turnover of 20, 40, 60 and 80 million. I recently led the first ever trade mission with the Trade Minister specifically for mid-sized businesses to Turkey. We took 30 mid-sized businesses with a turnover between 10 and about 100 million to Istanbul. Some of those companies had signed orders before they returned to London. But my point is, it had never, ever been done before. OK, so maybe we are moving in the right direction. Um, gentlemen, thank you uh, very much. Um, and for more on this subject, go to ft.com forward slash blueprint.